Welcome to the infection tube, everyone. Today, I have some questions for Dr. Max about Klebsiella pneumonia's sneaky tricks. Dr. Max, I watched the Klebsiella comedy night of the Microbial Comedy Club, and it was hilarious. But I have some questions about Klebsiella pneumonia's virulence factors. Can you explain them to me? Absolutely, Sella. I want you first to remember, Klebsi eats chips. Chips? Like snacks? Chips is a snack for us, but for Klebsiella, it is more than just a snack. It's a mnemonic for its virulence factors that keep them alive. It's like air and water for us. It protects them from being killed. Let's dive in. So, what does CHIPS stand for? CHIPS are the five virulence factors that Klebsiella has. 1. Capsule. 2. Hypermucoviscosity. 3. Iron-thieving siderophores. 4. Pili. And 5. Structural lipopolysaccharide. First up, C for capsule. Klebsiella wears a fancy polysaccharide capsule. It's like a shiny armor. There are over 77 types, but K1 and K2 are the most notorious, making it hard for our immune cells to gobble them up. So, it's like Klebsiella's fashion statement to avoid getting eaten? Exactly. These capsulated Klebsiella can cause serious infections like liver abscesses and pneumonia. K1 and K2 are especially sneaky, avoiding the macrophages like ninjas dodging capture. These capsules hide Klebsiella from immune cells, protecting it from being eaten and destroyed. Next, H for hypermucoviscosity. Imagine Klebsiella producing so much slime that it forms sticky webs. In the lab, we use the string test. If you lift a colony with a loop and it stretches into a string over 5 millimeters, it's hypermucoviscous. That sounds like a superhero with a super sticky web. It is. This slime makes it tough for our body to fight off the infection. Hypervirulent strains, especially with the RMPA gene, are super sticky, leading to more severe infections. But Dr. Max, how does this sticky slime form? Great question, Sella. The sticky slime, or hypermucoviscosity, is due to the exopolysaccharide web. This web is a network of sugars produced by Klebsiella. It's like a gooey blanket that covers the bacteria, making it harder for immune cells to attack and destroy them. The genes RMPA, regulator of mucoid phenotype gene A, RMPA2, and MAG-A, mucoid-associated gene A, are key players here. They are plasmid-mediated genes that regulate the formation of this web. So, the exopolysaccharide web and hypermucoviscosity are like best friends working together to protect Klebsiella? Exactly. This gooey web not only helps Klebsiella stick to surfaces but also shields it from our immune system, making infections harder to treat. Hypervirulent strains with these genes are particularly dangerous and often cause severe infections. The RMPA, RMPA2, and MAGA genes are crucial for this, as they enhance the production of the exopolysaccharide web. What about primary liver abscess? I heard something about MAGA being involved. Right you are, Sella. Primary liver abscess refers to infections that occur without any prior liver disease. MAGA positivity is strongly associated with these community-acquired liver abscesses and is less common in other types of Klebsiella infections. This makes MAGA a significant marker for these severe infections. Now, I for iron. Klebsiella loves iron, and it has special tools called siderophores to grab it. Think of them as iron-snatching ninjas. There are two main types of siderophores, aerobactin and enterobactin. These are molecules that bind iron very tightly, stealing it from the host's iron-binding proteins. Ninjas stealing iron? Klebsiella really has all the tricks. Yes. And without iron, Klebsiella can't grow. So, it uses these siderophores to thrive and cause more damage. Aerobactin is particularly aggressive, enhancing Klebsiella's ability to spread and infect. Enterobactin is another powerful siderophore that Klebsiella uses to ensure it gets enough iron. These iron collating molecules help Klebsiella outcompete other bacteria and thrive in the iron scarce environment of our bodies. Then, P is for Pili, tiny hair like structures. There are two types, type 1 and type 3. They help Klebsiella stick to surfaces and form biofilms, which are like bacterial fortresses. So, they're like sticky fingers? Precisely. These pili help Klebsiella cling to our cells and medical devices, making infections stubborn and hard to treat. 
The type 3 pili are particularly notorious for forming biofilms on catheters and other devices. These biofilms protect Klebsiella from antibiotics in our immune system, making infections harder to clear. Finally, L is for lipopolysaccharide, or LPS. This is Klebsiella's outer shield. It blocks attacks from our immune system by preventing proteins like C1Q and C3B from attaching and causing cell death. It's like Klebsiella has an invisible force field. Exactly. This shield makes it hard for our body to defeat the bacteria. The LPS also triggers strong immune responses, often leading to sepsis. It's like Klebsiella's secret weapon, making it tough for our immune system to mount an effective defense. Wow, Klebsiella is a master of disguise and defense with its chips, capsule, hypermucoviscosity, iron-thieving siderophores, pili, and structural lipopolysaccharide. That's right, Sella. Remembering Klebsi Eats Chips will help you recall these sneaky tricks, and always wash your hands and practice good hygiene to keep these bacteria at bay. Thanks, Dr. Max. Now I know how to spot Klebsiella's tricks and stay safe. You got it, Sella. Stay curious and keep learning. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the Infection Tube for more fun and educational videos.